come in Jesus. We invite you in God. We invite you into this place. We invite you into this space. Come in Jesus. We worship you, oh God. We glorify you, Jesus. We magnify you, Jesus. We invoke your presence, Lord. Fill this house. Fill this tabernacle, Jesus. Fill this house. Fill this tabernacle, Jesus. We welcome you, Lord. Ancient of days. Lion of the tribe of Judah, Mary's baby, the salt of the earth, we welcome you, we welcome you, we welcome you, we welcome you, Lord, have your way tonight, Lord. Have your way in our vessels. Have your way in our inner man. Have your way, have your way. We welcome you. Lift up your head, O ye gates, and be lifted up, ye everlasting doors. And the King of glory, the King of glory is here. As you and I sit and wait this ninth day, this ninth day of our upper room experience, we welcome you, Lord. If you could share it with me, if you could share the video, we welcome you, Holy. We welcome you, Lord. As we sit tonight. As we dine around the table tonight, move in this space, Lord. Move in this place, Holy Ghost. Oh God, grant us the grace to pray through. Anoint us afresh on tonight. Anoint us afresh, oh Lord. We will. We welcome you, Holy. It's the Holy Spirit. It's his presence. It's the Shekinah glory. It's the power of God. It's the glory. Right where you at, begin to declare the glory. It's the glory. Right where you at, begin to declare the glory. It's the glory. Oh. It's the glory of God. The glory of God that hits this tabernacle. The glory of God that rests on your tabernacle. It's the glory. It's the glory of God. We worship you. Come on and give him something sweet. Come on and give him something sweet because your voice is so sweet. Your voice is so precious. Your voice, it comes up before him. He's at all with your voice. We welcome you, Lord. We welcome you, Father. We can't do this on our strength. I definitely know I cannot. But God, you empower us. This night, night, we have been praying as a church in the morning, and then God says, go to virtual space. We welcome you. Bless your sons and your daughters. Bless everyone that come into this space. If it's two, two thousand, two million, we welcome you, Lord. Ah, go ahead and share. Go ahead and tell someone to just come on in. 
just so we can have a conversation, so we can pray. Just tell somebody to come on in, just so we can pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There is a glory. I feel his presence already. His presence has already been activated. Mm. There's a veil that you are about to pass through. There's a veil. And I hear the Lord says, that which was cut off, you're going to now have complete access to it. That which was cut off, you're going to now have complete access to it. That which was cut off, my God, that which was cut off, excuse me, that which was cut off, my God, that which was cut off, you're going to have complete access to it. The veil, because the veil, only the priest can go beyond the veil in the ancient days, in the Old Testament. And we know when, the, when Christ did what he did on the cross and the veil was torn from top to bottom, there was a complete access. But you're going to access it easier. Oh, help us, Holy Ghost. The access is going to be easier because we come as a military troop. We come as an army tonight. There's no gender in the presence of God. There's only spirit. That's why he said, they that worship me, worship him. They that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Yes, the veil. So God, we push past the veil. We press in the veil. I want you to press in. I don't pray deep prayers. I pray simple prayers. But I believe that God moves upon the simplicity of everything that we say to him, of everything that we desire. So Jessica, when you begin to pray, you invite, even as I was preparing, the Lord said in my, the first word he said in my spirit, strike. He said, strike. He said, tell the people they're going to strike everything down tonight. It was so clear. In my spirit, man, he said, strike. Strike. He said, strike. So even before we go into our prayer tonight, we want to empty ourselves. Yeah. We want to empty ourselves. We want to ask God to cleanse us on tonight. We want to ask God to purify us on tonight. We want to ask God to circumcise us on tonight. We want to ask God to forgive us of every sin, forgive us of every iniquity, forgive us of doing things halfway. We want to ask God to do a new thing and then we're going to be released by the power of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. And so we come tonight, we come to the brazen altar. We come to the place of threshing on tonight. We come to the place of circumcision on tonight. We come to the place of separation on tonight. Where we separate ourselves for about an hour or so. Where we go into our closet on tonight. Where we draw the flint knife on tonight. Where we circumcise. We ask God to circumcise our hearts on tonight. Cut every fleshly thing, God. Start with me, God. Fleshly things. Anything in my mind and my thought. Projections. That's not of you. Projections and thoughts. And so we strike every projection. We strike every thought that is not of you. We welcome you. Ask him to purge you. Come on. Ask him to purge you. There's a purging that takes place in his presence. We don't, we don't compromise ourselves and we don't sin presumptuously. No, but we're, 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 we honor the presence of God and we reverence him. And because we reverence him, we don't come before him without not being washed. We don't come before him without not sanctifying ourselves. So we sanctify ourselves in this virtual space. We sanctify ourselves right in our room, right in our cars. We sanctify ourselves wherever we find ourselves. We sanctify we sanctify. Say, God, sanctify me. God, sanctify me. He said he wants to use vessels.
vessels, but he sanctifies the vessel. The woman at the well, she realized that what she was drawing with was not sufficient. And when the true water came, and when the water, which is the washing of the word, she went on and she was an evangelist. Sanctify, sanctify for out of your belly shall flow rivers, rivers, rivers of living water. Uh, rivers of living water. Rivers of living water. Uh, everything about you is about to flow. Everything about you. Everything this month is going to be a month of marvel of improper science. Rivers of living water. Rivers of living water. Oh God, we thirst. Oh God, we thirst. We thirst, Jesus. We thirst, Lord. Come on. Just a little bit more. Come on. We thirst, oh Lord. We thirst for your glory. We thirst for your presence. We thirst for you, Lord. We want something fresh. We want something new. We desire something more. We thirst for you, Lord. We thirst for you, Lord. Nothing else matters. We can have so much in the bank. Some of you watching me, and God told me tonight we're going to even be praying about promotion. Your salary is going to double. Your salary is going to double. But even that doesn't matter. What would it profit a man to gain the whole world and mess around and lose his soul? So we come in tonight thanking you, oh God, that you've cleansed us. Thanking you, oh God, that you've heard us. Thanking you, oh God, that you have received us. Thanking you, oh God, that now, in the name of Jesus, for I hear the Lord said in the book of 2 Kings chapter 13, the Bible tells me that Elisha was getting ready to leave. And so a king came to visit the prophet Elisha. And Elisha said, listen, I want you to open up the windows. I'm speaking to windows on tonight. I'm speaking to doors on tonight. So the Bible says that he said to him, open up the window. And he said, take an arrow. And he said, shoot the arrow. And then he says, take another arrow. And he said, smite the ground. He said, strike the ground. He said, strike it. And, and the thing about it, he only struck it three times. Now, some of you all never think that a pastor or an under shepherd can ever get angry. Well, let me school you differently. The prophet got up and he was angry. He was angry at the man. He said, why did you only strike it three times? He said, you would have had more victory. He said, you're going to only be able to overcome Armand. The spirit of Armin, the nation of Armin, only three times. He said, you should have kept striking it. 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 And I come to declare that you are going to strike it. Open up your mouth and begin to declare what you are asking God to strike for you. And then God says, as you pray, because you release the word, that the angels, your ministering angels, they stand position to move. But God says you have to do it. Open up your mouth. Father, everything that is not of you. We strike down every familiar spirit. Come on. Simple prayer. Simple prayer. We strike down familiar spirit. We strike down prideful, haughty things. Arrogance. God, start. Let nothing that is proudful. Haughty, arrogant, come up against. We strike against that thing that wants to consume the heart and the mind of those that we love. We strike it with the voice of the blood. We strike it with the blood of Jesus. Come on. We strike it now. We strike the gates of hell and everything coming out of the six regions of the under earth. God, right now, we cover ourselves. We continue, God. To cover ourselves in the name of Jesus. 
Open up your mouth. There's some things you're asking God to strike down. You're not praying against any person. But it's the spirit in the name of Jesus. So open up your mouth right where you are. Come on, open up, open up your mouth. Begin to declare God. We strike against every works of divination. Come on, that witch that's been positioned right where you at. That witch that's been positioned to I'm trying to control the marriage. That witch, that warlock that's positioned trying to overtake and bring all kinds of confusion. That witch. That spirit, we strike against mental insanity. We strike by the blood of Jesus. By Paul, a simple prayer. Come on, simple prayer. We strike everything that wants to come up to consume the mind and the thought. We strike every locust. We strike every canker worm. We strike every caterpillar. We strike everything that God has not ordained. Come on, we strike. The Bible tells me that David began to speak. Thank you, Holy Spirit. He looked at he looked at Saul and he began to say, You don't understand. He said there was a bear and there was a lion that came up. And the bear and the lion came up. See, we're in the upper room. And it's the ninth day. And the closer you get to your breakthrough. Oh, hell breaks loose. The closer you get to what God is about to do. Come on, you are your witness. Everything that can go crazy begins to go crazy. Everything that don't make sense begins not to make sense. The closer you get to it. The closer it's positioned to you. The closer you're in front of it. The closer you're about to receive it. The closer. David said, listen, something was about to happen to the sheep. We strike against everything that wants to come up against the sheep. Come on. Every, every body of Christ, the body of believers, where the enemy wants to come in and scatter, where the enemy wants to come in and divide and conquer. We strike every hydra. We strike every false doctrine. We strike every false prophet and every false prophetess. We strike heralings in the pulpit. We strike down every thought that God has not said. Listen, I don't know about you, but the enemy will always try to bother and molest. So after, con after continuously, I pull him down immediately. Why? Because the higher you go, the less oxygen you have. So you can't depend on your natural strength. You have to depend on the power of the Holy Ghost. You have to depend on the voice of God. You have to depend on the power of the Holy Ghost. So we strike. We strike every negative thought. We strike that thing that wants to tell you to stop. That the, the, the spirit that wants to tell you to quit. The spirit that wants to tell you you've tried it again and again. It don't make sense. We strike the head off. We smash the toe of the thing. We smash the finger that we strike. David said, you don't understand. He said, a bear and a lion came up against the sheep. We pray for the flock. Every church, we lift up Father, every church. We pray, God, for the flock. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Pray with me. Ah. Pray with me. We come up against everything that wants to come and kill the flock and divide the flock and confuse the flock in the name of Jesus. That wants to cause the flock to draw back. That wants to cause the flock to become cold. That wants to cause the flock to not be connected. We strike every spirit of, of oh God, of miss, every miss, every miss in the name of Jesus. We come against the spirit of Absalom. We come against it's that spirit uh, that wants to woo uh, the air away uh, of that sheep from the church, uh, of that sheep from the house. Uh, in the name of Jesus, we are praying not just for life empowerment, uh, but we're praying for the church. We're praying for the church uh, because we understand that the gates of hell shall never prevail. We strike uh, the gates. Uh, we strike uh, the bars. Uh, we strike uh, the brass. Uh, we strike uh, the doors. Uh, we strike it with the blood. We strike it with the blood. 
God told Moses, he said, get the blood and sprinkle it. When you look at the meaning of sprinkle, some of the terminology, it means to strike it with the blood. It means to strike it and sprinkle it in the name of Jesus. Come on. So we decree and declare the blood. We speak the blood, the blood. It's a blood strike. A blood strike in the name of Jesus. Over minds tonight. A blood strike in the name of Jesus. In homes tonight. Because God says, listen, we're supposed to walk in peace and harmony. And anything that comes to disrupt peace and harmony. God said, strike it now. Strike it now. Even as the word of God tells us. Again in 2 Kings chapter 13. When the prophet rose up. And it was the prophet Elijah. He said, why did you only strike? it three times. He said, you should have struck the ground six, seven times. Why? Because you would have had victory again and 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 again. But you said you, he said you stopped at three. Tonight is the ninth strike. Tonight is the ninth strike. Come on. You know what you're asking God to do. Come on. The angelic host, they're in position to do exactly what you say. Come on. To do exactly what you are decreeing and what you are declaring in the name of Jesus. He don't care about form or fashion. But there's a strike. See, when you really want something, when you're really desperate for something, you, you, you say, God, whatever, whatever you got to do, however you got to do it. And so the upper room was there. And God says, go. He says, go to the upper room. He says, I'm going to separate you. And you're going to begin to strike up the second heaven. You're going to begin to strike up the atmospheric conditions uh, because of the satanic powers uh, that have been in gridlock uh, for so long. And yes, the church uh, was under attack, uh, but he said, I want you to isolate yourself. He said, I want you to go uh, into a prayer vault uh, and close yourself off. Uh, and you're about uh, to war. You're about uh, to come out. So called about. You're about to command. Uh, you're about to strike uh, everything that's unseen, that's operating behind uh, the failures of the thing. God everything we strike double mindedness we strike competition church competition we strike it in the name of Jesus that we'll learn to sit at each other's feet God help me to humble myself to sit at great men and great women's feet because God I got so much to learn come on say God help me to humble myself because what's happening there's so much disobedience in the body of Christ so God always look at the under shepherd God help me to be obedient we strike the spirit of discord come on we strike God says strike it down we strike there's a spirit of disunity there's a a spirit of mistrust. There's a spirit of lying. And the lie has now become a stronghold. Become a strong man. But we strike it by fire. We strike it by fire. We strike everything by fire. Everything. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Bible tells me the book of Judges. Judges about 13, 14 chapter. Samson got upset. Samson got tired of the Philistines. So Samson caught some foxes. You're about to catch some foxes. <laughs> speak holy, holy. Oh God, speak holy spirit. Come on, pray with me. You're about to catch some foxes. There have been some foxes that are around you. Yes. And because a lot of times, some of you, you just love people. And so a lot of times, you don't even see their teeth. You don't even see what they're doing behind closed doors. But they're working and they're operating. So the Bible tells me that the Philistines kept bothering up. So Samson got up in a righteous indignation. See, your indignation needs to be righteous. Where God says, when you and I to strike up, that means we strike to kill. We don't strike to maim. We don't strike to wound. We want to utterly remove that spirit in the name of Jesus. So God can give birth to the person. We strike the spirit. We command the spirit to be stricken to the belly of hell. To be pinned by the fire of the Holy Ghost. We know spirits don't die, but they can be struck down. Why? Because the Bible said, I saw Satan fall like lightning. In the devotion, God says it's gonna fall. 
be cold, he goes. He says, it's going to fall. It's going to fall. So the Bible tells us that Samson, speak Holy Ghost, he caught the foxes. He caught about a thousand foxes. You're about to catch some things. You're about to catch that which was a deception will no longer ever be a deception. As I pray for you, I claim it for me. Seven thousand fold in the name of Jesus. That thing that was, oh God, glazing over the eye. This night day of the upper room as you strike to kill as you strike to remove in the name of Jesus Christ some folk are saying well, why are you praying that kind of prayer oh, we read your bible oh my god when Joshua went to battle Joshua didn't say how you doing do you, do you mind if I pierce you right here do you mind if I just give you a cut Joshua scale the neck off he scale the head off oh god when David went to battle because Saul wicked Saul said I want you to give me two, a hundred four skins. David comes back with two hundred four skins. He, he stripped, he cut from here, and he took off the thing. Come on, Holy Ghost. So we cut the head of it. We cut the neck of it. We cut the tentacles. We strike the tentacles. We strike demonic altars. We strike demonic arrows. We strike it. Yes, God. Yes, Samson caught foxes. Tonight, in the name of Jesus, as we pray through, come on, pray with me. Prophet Celia, continue to pray for your apostle. Pray with me. Pray, pray, pray. He caught foxes and he put fire to their tail. You're about to put some fire to that thing. Whatever it is that you're believing for, come on. Whatever it is that you're declaring, come on. You're putting fire to it. Come on, whatever you're asking God to do. The Bible says that Samson took the foxes and burned their tail and let them loose in the field. Speak holy. Oh. Speak holy ghost. So God, we set fire to that thing right now. Come on up. Burn. It must burn. Everything that's not of you. God, it must burn. Anything that is in us that will cause us to not be able. Don't God manifest as you desire. Burn. Let it burn in the name of Jesus. Burn out every high thing. We burn out pornography. Burn the spirit of masturbation. Pray with me. We strike and we burn. We burn so many marriages where adultery has taken place. And as a result, so many marriages have gone awry. We burn up the spirit of adultery that the husband and the wife will only have eyes for each other. So many marriages where abuse it's taking place behind closed doors and no one knows so because she smiles and because he is happy but they don't know the hell they don't know what's happening father let your fire we light fire to that thing we light fire to the tail you said with the head and never the tail so we light fire to the tail of that thing we light the fire of the holy ghost we decree the fire of the Holy Ghost. We release your fire on tonight. Your fire that burns. Everything that's traveling. Your holy fire. Your consuming fire. In the name of Jesus. Wash us, Lord. We strike everything that's a t everything that wants to come up against the head. Everything that wants to come up against your thoughts, your mind. We strike. The Bible tells me, thank you, Holy Ghost. Oh, Lord. That Korah tried to come up against Moses. Korah must have lost his mind. But the problem is, Korah had some followers. Oh, my God. Ay, 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 ay. Korah had some followers. And these followers were, were, were listening to Korah. The Bible said that because Korah knew that he was anointed. So he decided that he was going to contend against Moses. And Moses said, be careful. We strike against every spirit of defiance. In the name of Jesus, our children will not be defiant. No, they will not. Our children will listen. They will follow. They will observe. Church people. Then when they become true flocks, they will not be defiant. They will not go against 
what the head is saying, what the under shepherd is saying, but they will walk in obedience. There must be obedience. I know it sounds like a disease. Obedience is like a disease in the body of Christ. But God said that when we are awake, when we are obedient, and when we walk the way he says, we will eat the good of the land. When we obey what the Holy Ghost is saying, when we obey, and if you say, I wonder if it's the Holy Ghost, that's why you have to connect into an upper room. So as you're praying, when you step into the house, or when you connect virtually, your under shepherd is going to be saying something that God has already spoken into your spirit. So God, we strike every spirit of defiance. Korah, Korah, my God, my God. We're about to shift soon from striking. Korah tried to strike Moses. Korah tried to upset and Korah tried to unseat because Korah was, yes, anointed. Korah was, yes, a prince. But God did not call Korah. Korah needed to serve. I hear you, Holy Ghost. I see some of us were sitting at a table. Some of us are sitting under a table. I disrupt my thought. I just saw something in the realm of the spirit. Everything that you put on the table, God says he's going to do it for you. Some of you have a table in your room. That's your altar. God says put what you're asking him. You can either write it down. And what he's telling me, I didn't study this, so I know this is Rhema. I'm going to do the very thing that I'm telling you to do. Because there's some things I need. Yeah. After I'm finished praying, I'm going to go ahead and do what the Holy Ghost is telling me to tell you to do. He says, put what you're believing for. I just saw a table. Some of us are seated at the table. Some of us are seated under the table. Those who are seated under, God says he's moving you from a defeated position to a king position. He's moving you from the position of where you thought that you weren't good enough, you weren't qualified, that God says he's shifting your position. And then he said, I have to even feed you under the table. Why? Because of some people, when they see the star, when they see the anointing, when they see the fresh thing upon you, their assignment is to make sure, try to try you, or try to drown you, or try to kill it, or try to, I hear Holy Ghost, every fly spirit, Providence Celia, every fly spirit that wants to come up against the church, every fly spirit that wants to come up against the body of Christ, every fly spirit, every Beelzebub, the Lord of the fly, the Lord of the flies, in the name of Jesus Christ, every fly spirit, speak Holy Ghost, I rely on you Holy Ghost, every fly spirit, so God said I'm shifting you up, some of us that listen, that sometimes you can be looking so good, but you're still, your spirit is still under the table. Your spirit is still in the place of defeat. Your spirit is still in the place of doubt. Your spirit is still in the place of like I'm a feather chef. Your, still, your spirit is still in the place of where you say, God, I've been trying it so much. To that person that tried to put their foot on you, I hear God say backwards. They're about to fall backwards. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. God, give me the strength to pray tonight uh, to that person uh, and prophetically decree. Uh, see, because when you get into a certain realm, uh, you pray and you decree. Uh, you release and you decree. Uh, you command and you demand. Uh, in the name of that person uh, that put their foot on you, uh, that tried to put, uh, I hear the Lord said backwards, uh, backward fall. Backwards. I hear God says uh, he's going to open the terrible so called the booth. See, they try to put their foot on you. And sometimes they try to do it uh, in an inconspicuous way. Uh, trying to make you feel it. Uh, so Cora tried to put uh, his foot where he should never put his foot. Uh, Cora tried uh, to put his foot uh, in Big Moses' shoes. Uh, he should have meant uh, if he was in prayer, uh, if he was not carnal, if he was not fleshly, uh, he would have looked at the leader. And he would have said, Whatever you say, I'm going to do it. Why? Because God will train up the next based on how they treat the now. You can't be next if you don't know how to respect now. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence. The evidence. You're about to 
see some evidence. So there's a place of defiance. We strike the ground of defiance. How do I know? Here's what the Lord just whispered to me. As he's recalling scriptures to my spirit man. The ground opened up to where Korah was. And all of them. That was in cahoots with him. And all of Korah. His, his, his posse. His, his, his clique. His clan. His hoop. His troop. The Bible says that the ground opened up. And swallowed Korah. And swallowed men. Women. Children. So we talk about striking the ground. Thank you, Holy Ghost. We talk about releasing arrows. So everything of a strike. There were some things that they buried concerning you and me. There's some things that wicked people buried up saying that you will never. Saying that you will never. So I'm going to put this because they will never. And so they look at you and they try to bury certain things. But I hear God says the very thing that they try to bury is the very thing that he's going to use to bury them. That's why we don't put our mouth on people. It doesn't matter what they go through. Our assignment is to pray. Our assignment is to say God bring understanding. Our assignment is to say God whatever you need to do bring remedy and clarity to it. Or cut it immediately. There was a complete cut. We pray tonight. Come on. This night, this upper room, as I was praying and talking to the Lord, the Lord said, True conversion. Come on, true conversion. Keep praying me through, Sister Anella. Because we're going to shift in a moment to what God told me to tell you all to do for each other. There's a, there's a place, he said to me, daughter, true conversion. He says, when there's a true conversion, he says, it cannot be reverted. There's a true conversion. Let me get to say, Lord, speak to me. Acts chapter 12, the Bible says that Peter was in a place where he could not even pray for himself. And so God said, I'm now marshalling conversion troops. God said, everyone that's on the line tonight, you are a conversion troop. In the name of Jesus, everything about your life, you're about to even convert because of what you are praying. Because what you decree and declare that you're about to convert. You're about to convert atmosphere. You're about to convert assignments. You're about to convert soul ties. You're about to convert that which was twisted. You're about to convert. There's going to be an understanding of the veil of understanding of in the name of Jesus. We remove every dark veil. We set fire to every dark veil. Pray with me. Pray with me. Yes, God. We set fire, come on, to every dark veil. That there be true conversion. The dark veil. Everything that was not clear. Everything that was not understood. Everything that was not seen. We set fire to dark veil. We ask, oh God, for a true conversion. That the light of God's word will convert the spirit man. That the light of God's counsel will convert and light the candle of what's on the inside of us. True conversion conversion father that will be conversion listen the word of God tells us in 1 Corinthians I believe chapter 3 it says that we behold him in an unveiled face we're, we're looking at Jesus in an unveiled face why because when we're in his presence we don't need a veil you remember when Moses came off the mountain and the people looked at him and the people said listen can't you just cover your face the people looked at him and they said can't you just cover your face because we can't afford to see your glory we can't afford to look at you in that particular place so can't you just go ahead and cover your face and so the bible tells us that we see him in an unveiling place in a place of unveiling and so god said i'm unveiling some things tonight because of true conversion god said i'm going to use you to begin to unveil and to begin to move the veil in the name of Jesus. See, because when we move the veil, we step up past the veil. And so that which we could not see is now made manifest. And the Bible tells us that we look at him with an unveiled face. And we are him because we shall go and be transformed and be converted from glory to 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 glory. It's a glory conversion. That when they look at you, you're not the same anymore. That when they try to even perhaps even try to connect you up to who you used to be yesterday, it's not the same anymore. God can do wonders.
want change in one day. And folk will try to continue. And people will try to look at you and think that you're the same person yesterday. He can do one conversion. He said to, oh God, oh God, Peter. He said, when thou art converted. In the book of Luke 2 and 22. Oh my God, Luke 22. And about the 21st. Yes, Holy Ghost. To about the 33rd chapter. He says, when you are converted. In Luke 22. He said, strengthen your brethren. He said, I got to convert. And what God is saying, I'm converting quicker. Why? So you can pour strength. So you can command strength. So you can decree and declare. Like the word of God tells us. In Jeremiah 20. 29 29. Oh, earth, 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 open your ears. Jeremiah 22 and 29. Oh, earth, earth, who is earth? We're the vessel. We're the clay vessel. Say, God, convert me. Say, God, I want a true conversion. Say, I want a true conversion. Say, I want a true conversion to where I will never go back to that thing. Come on, I want a true conversion. Come on, pray, 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 pray with me, pray with me, true conversion, a true conversion in our spirit, a true conversion in our heart, come on, true conversion, a true conversion where, where, where we get delivered. Some of you, even before you leave, or even maybe as you're watching me right now, you're going to begin to vomit. You're going to begin to vomit. Some of you, after you get out the prayer line, you're going to begin to throw up. You're going to begin to throw up. You're going to begin to belch. You're going to begin to come up with something. That's God. Not only converting, but deliverance. In the name of Jesus. Why? Because it has happened to me. And it should happen to to you and guess what if it happens again and again and again that's God delivering you again and again that's where the conversion comes in and you and you are fully converted so even as you pray even as you pray in the name of Jesus you're asking God to fully convert God looked at Peter and said when you are fully converted Peter and all of them was in the upper room 120 of them but they were not fully converted they only had a form but there was not the fullness the Holy Ghost was not yet filled. They were not yet filled with the power. They were not yet filled with the presence. And so when there's a conversion, there's a filling. And so every time a, a, a fly spirit, every time something tries to land in your spirit man or your mind, you begin now to wrestle. You begin now to activate what you already know that needs to be activated. Many times the enemy comes and buffet us unless he does what Saul did, who came to Paul, who was converted. Not only was he converted up and translated up but his name was converted up from Saul to Paul up as Jacob was converted up from Jacob to Israel up there's a true conversion up in the upper room convert me oh God let me walk in complete conversion convert my mouth some of us we curse we love God but we use foul language Say, God, convert my, my tongue. We love God. But some of us, we curse. We, some of us, we have a quick temper. I ask God to deal with my quick temper. Because I'm for real, church. I'm for real. I, I strike. My, my, my covering, he was like, he said, prophetess. He said, my God, Pastor Seal will tell you. So I asked God, I said, God, help me with my temper. Because I'm like David. When something comes up to try and bother someone I love or try to bother me, I strike. The Bible tells us that David said, I went back in 1 Kings about the 17 chapter, 36 or about the 38 verse. David said, I went back. He said, I struck the bear and the lion and I delivered the, the sheep out of the mouth. And when it tried to turn on me, David said, I decided to turn on it. Yes, David said, it turned on me. So I decided to turn on it. David said, it tried to lay hold of me because I took something up away from it. And every time you all don't know, that's why you got to pray for your leaders. You have to pray for your pastors. You have to pray for your under shepherds because as we are in the trench warring for you, the enemy now will try to come and turn on us. And when he can't touch us, he'll begin to turn up on those that we love. And when oh my seek out of every pastor, every prophet, prophetess, every apostle, pastor that is watching up in the name of Jesus, I strengthen you up as you strengthen me up. See, when there's a true conversion, you become an iron pillar. I prophesy the pillar, the pillar of 
Jacob, in the name of Jesus, the pillar of Jason, the pillar of Jesse, in the name of Jesus, the iron pillar, the pillar in the name of Jesus. So when there's a conversion, God says convert. In this upper room experience, you are fully converted. And when the fly wants to touch your anointing, when that fly wants to touch your anointing, they will not be able to even penetrate it. There is no laying of eggs. We smash every egg, every cockatrice egg, everything, every frog spirit. Speak to me, Holy Ghost. Every frog spirit. I hear you, Holy Ghost, in Revelation chapter 13. It talks about the spirit of the frog. It talks about the Antichrist and how out of him came frog spirits. Frogs was one of the plagues that even the prophet Moses released. So every frog spirit, frog means perversion. It means contamination. Every frog spirit. Speak holy, holy, holy. Speak holy, God. So in this upper room, we deal with frog spirits. Stay with me. Pray with me. Pray a little longer with me. Pray with me. Pray. Pray. Every frog, every demonic frog, everything that wants to come in and lay and, con and, and connect in the name of Jesus. Father, every frog spirit that tries to come up and pass themselves off as a prophet or a prophetess, every frog spirit that tries to come in our lives in the name of Jesus and be a witch. God, when you open our eyes, God, let us move quickly because conversion, once it's converged, once it's converted, it moves. Now God, move. The Bible tells me in Acts chapter 12 that Peter was laying. He was in a room. Some of us may be sitting. Some of us may be laying. Some of us may be standing. Some of us may be kneeling. Some of us may be. Whatever it is that we're doing in the room, whatever it is that we're doing in the room, Peter got so overwhelmed. Come on. Because I believe in the 10 days, I believe that they got sleepy, like some of us do. Come on. They got tired, and they sure enough got hungry because they could not eat. Try fast. Try fast when you only drink water. If you drink if if you drink tea, it's only to break gas. But you don't sweeten it. You don't you don't make it to your taste bud. And you only maybe drink it once, dry fast. There's some things that we don't get until we go through a dry fast. So can I tell them? Can I say this to you? The Bible didn't say, but I truly believe that they were on a dry fast. Say with me, we're almost done. They were on a dry fast. Brother, see Clover, they were on a dry fast. Yes, Nancy, Evangelist, Evangelist Nadio, they were on a try fast. Because this kind go without. But by prayer <coughs> and fasting, this kind go without. So I believe that they were on a try fast. I don't believe that they were able to go and then eat what they wanted to eat. I believe that God said, you got to shift yourself in. And I believe that God didn't tell them to bring some bread. I don't believe that God told them to bring some wine. I don't believe that God told them to bring some cheese. But they were in the upper room. And it was a dry fast. And I can just imagine after maybe day two. When the belly began to. Oh God. Have your belly began to speak to you. Because when you begin to be converted. There's some pains. You go through birthing pains. You go through growing pains. You grow. You go through the pain of it. Just like when a contraction begins to hit you. And you begin to feel it. And so you go through that thing. And I can just imagine them. And they're like God. I'm hungry. Come on. And God said you're not hungry for what I want to give you yet. That hunger is natural. That hunger is flesh. That hunger is carnal. That hunger is what you need in your physical body. But there is a hunger. There is something that I'm getting ready to give to you. And I can just imagine them on day three, on day four, on day five. God said you're not here yet. The atmosphere is not yet ready. The ground has not yet been plowed. The ground has not yet been opened. The ground is still hard. The ground of our hearts. God, the ground of our hearts. God, the ground of my heart. God, let not my heart be hard. I only want my heart to be hardened, God, against sin. 
I want my heart to be hardened, God, against iniquity. I want my heart to be hardened against everything that you are against. And I want my heart to be open to everything that you are open to. Come on, I'm almost done. Stay with me. 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 Come on, share it. Bring someone else on. Stay with me. Come on. Say, God, my heart. Come on. Begin to talk to him about your heart. He says, listen, listen, it's not about, he said, I'm trying to get on the inside. He said, I'm trying to get in on the inside. He said, I'm trying to open up and tear the veil to get in on the inside. Come on. Say, God, tear the veil. Say, God, tear the veil. Say, God, tear the veil. Say, God, tear the veil of my spirit. Tear the veil of my mind. Come on. Say, tear the veil of my emotions. Say, tear the veil. Say, tear the veil. There's some things that we have to veil because there was so much hurt. There was so much rejection. There was so much and you got tired. In the name of you just got tired and fed up. You got tired and fed up of church. You got tired and fed up of church people. You just got tired and sick. You just got tired. And you said, my God, I'm done. You said, my God. And so God said, I'm trying to get in. I'm trying to get in as a thief. Trying to look for an opening. But God said, I'm not a thief. But I want to steal your heart. Oh, my dear kids. God said, I want to steal your heart. He said, I want to steal your heart. Oh, I want to steal your heart. I want to steal your heart. Oh, I want to steal your heart. He said, oh, I want to steal your heart. He says, that thing that tried to come and take from you. He says, no. He said, I'm in. He said, when you let me in. He said, I'll steal back. I'll take back. I'll command back. I'll restore back. I'll renew it again. I'll revive it again. Pray with me. Pray with me. Holy Ghost, I need you. Holy Ghost, I need you to help me to pray through. Could it be that when they're in the upper room, pray. Just imagine the fifth day, the seventh day. They're like, God, I'm hungry still. But I'm not as hungry as I, I was. On day two, my flesh isn't craving for that. My flesh isn't yearning for that no more. My flesh don't desire it like that no more. My flesh, on my neck, my flesh is not craving for him like that no more. My flesh is not craving for her like that no more. I don't have the desire to do that anymore. I don't want it anymore. God said, when I come in and I, and I tear the veil, he said, when I, when I tear the veil, he says, you're not going to want that anymore. And so God said, I want you to go and wait. He says, I want you to go and wait for the promise. He says, I want you to go and position yourself. For there's a place of tearing. There's a place of tearing. And there's a place of towering. As you tarry, God says, I'm going to tear it. As you tarry in prayer, God said, I'm going to lift it. As you tarry in prayer, he said, God said, I'm going to break it. As you tarry in prayer, God said, you're going to get stronger. You're going to get stronger. He said, you're going to get stronger. And when you're getting weak, you run to the underground. You run to the place of the upper room where you hide yourself in the name of Jesus under his tabernacle. Where you hide yourself under the veil of his anointing. Where you hide yourself under his mantle. Where you hide yourself. Where you hide yourself on the glory. Where you hide yourself. Where you're so in him. Where you're so connected to him. Where nothing of you is now exposed where nothing of you is no longer exposed and I can believe that God says I want you to pray through to where you understand that nothing of you no more your dress, your panties your briefs, your bras nothing of you is no longer exposed your thighs, nothing of you is no longer exposed and even when the enemy tried to come up and try to pervert that which was holy God said I Covered you. I hear you, Holy Ghost. I covered you. God said, You got to stay there until you're fully converted. He said, You got to stay there until the promise, till the promise, till the promise, till the promise. Could you, could you, could you just lend me your ear just for a little bit? While they were in the upper room, I had a thought. Um, could it be?
Could it be that God says, you pray for yourself so much. I want you to begin to pray for others. Intercessors, we, we always pray for others. We were born to pray for others. Sometimes when God calls us, sometimes when God calls people to walk alongside of us, they don't understand the importance of interceding for someone else. Say with me. Say with me. Say with me. They don't understand. I told you I was going to charge my phone tonight. So that way I can pray through a little bit more. So now the Lord began to speak to me. And he says, tell everyone that's on the call to pick a name of a person and begin to pray for them. So tell everyone that's on the call. If you've not written anything in this, just put your name. Just say me. Just say me. And so some of you pick a name. Like if you're praying and God said, I want you to target the prayer for that person. Like if I choose Nancy Nadell. I start to pray and intercede for Nancy Nadell. Lord, I hope you're listening. I pray you're listening because I know this is God. He said, I see no babies. Yes, Geneva, my sweet niece. Yes, baby. I'll be praying for you. Come on. I want all of you. Their names. There may be only a few, but there's only a few, which is fine. There was only, come on, only a few. I want you to begin to pray. For the name of that person. You look at the name like Mackenzie. Come on. Pray like Angel. Come on. <coughs> he said tell everyone to take a name. And you're going to pray for the person. Begin to release. Come on. Begin to pray. Come on. Right where you're at. Your mouth should not be. You should not be eating. Baby if you eating food go ahead and come off. Because you dead weight. If you eating food go ahead and come off. Because you dead weight. We don't need no dead weights. Come on, if you eating food, if you stuffing food down and you watching me like it's an entertainment, go ahead and come off. This is not for you. Go ahead and pray. Take a name. Take a name and pray for your sister. Come on. Pray for your brother. Come on. Begin to pray. Come on. Say something to God about them. Begin to pray. The Bible tells me that in the book of Acts chapter 2 and about the 7th verse, uh, when you read down 7 to about the 13th verse, uh, the Bible says that they would get to marvel. Uh, they begin to marvel because uh, they could not understand uh, how could these men speak the same language. Uh, so go ahead and pray. Uh, go ahead and begin to intercede. Uh, come on, take a name. You see a name that's there. Come on, begin to pray. Uh, pray for your Jael. Pray for we are daughters of destiny. Uh, pray for Jael. Jael is a commander. She is, and you are a Jael in the realm of the spirit. Begin to pray as you see a name. Begin to call out that name. Begin to ask God to release and to move. Begin to ask God. Come on, pray, pray, pray. Come on, pray, pray, pray. Even if it's just one word that you are speaking over the person. Even if it's just one word. Begin to pray that God will begin to do wonders. That God will begin to show them his might. To show them his glory. To show them his awesome authority. Begin to pray. Begin to command the angels. The angels of the Lord. Commanding angels. As you are a daughter of Jael. As you are the daughter of Jael. When Sisera came into the camp. Come on. Begin to pray for their homes. Begin to pray everything in the home. Begin to say the home is settled. Come on, everything that was in disarray. Everything that came to disrupt. Come on, a decree and a declare. Oh God, Pastor Brenda Morris, that everything is now settled. In the name of Jesus Christ. Come on, in the name of Jesus, my daughter Esau. My daughter Esau, I see you, daughter. In the name of Jesus, everything is now settled. In the name of Jesus, come on, pray. In the name of Jesus, oh God, Sister Valerie, Minister Valerie, come on, begin to pray. In the name of Jesus, that your mouth will enlarge in itself. Sister Valerie, the Lord, I just saw you and the Lord just showed me your mouth uh, enlarging, your mouth opening up. And so every mouth that was on you, God says, now your mouth is open up. And I hear God says uh, that which tried to even try to consume uh, that which you are positioned to have uh, is now going to be consumed uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, come on, come on, pray. Uh, you're praying for your sister. Uh, you're praying for the brother. You're praying for the home uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, oh God, Pastor Angel Glow, uh, Prophetess Glow, in the name of Jesus Christ, Apostle Glow, in the name of Jesus, there's a glory. We add an R Y to you. In the name of Jesus, 
Jesus, that's the glory of the Lord. The glory of the Lord. The glory of the Lord. The glory will hit your ministry in a dimension in the name of Jesus that you have never experienced it before. The power of the glory. The power of the Holy Ghost. We pray tonight. We pray tonight. God, I lift up. God, our dean this year. God, pray. Come on up. You're praying for each other. Come on up. You're break, break, breaking it. 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 You're breaking it. God, you're breaking it. Come on, pray. In the name of Jesus, everyone, everyone in this prayer, everyone under the sound of this place, in the name of Jesus, Sister Ocean, in the name of Jesus, Hines, in the name of Jesus, that your hand will become like the sword of Eliezer, that your hand, that the word of God in you will begin to grow, that the word of God, that when you begin to speak immediately with speed and light, I prophesy speed and light over you, speed and light, in the name of Jesus, speed and light, in the name of Jesus Christ, come on, we're praying for each other, come on, we're praying, we're praying, we're praying, we're praying. Come on, we're praying, we're praying, we're praying. In the name of Jesus, I draw. I draw it for you. I draw it for every one of us. I draw, we're pulling. We're pulling up each other. We're not pulling each other down, but we're pulling up. We're pulling up. We're rooting up. Come on, we're pulling up. Come on, we're pulling up. Prophet Celia, we're pulling up. We're pulling the anointing. Come on, we're pulling the power. Come on, we're pulling that thing in. What we're believing God to do up tomorrow is about breakthrough only up we're pulling it come on up we're pulling it evangelist fiona we're pulling it up i decree i declare everything that was not supposed to be up cannot stay up and god we pull we pull that which you desire we pull oh god we pull up we pull from the realm we pull from the third heaven. We pull from the throne room. We pull from the holies. We pull from the holies of holies. We pull from the holies. We pull from the holy of holies. Come on, pray for your sister. We're almost done. Come on, pray. In the name of Jesus, we cut off. I decree and I declare the axe head to everything that wants to come up against you. Sister Hi, Sister Hey, Sister Nadel, Prophet Celia. Oh God, Evangelist Emanuela, Sister Herleen, in the name of Jesus, we lay the axe to the root of everything. And we declare, as God's word said to us in the book of Daniel, I believe Daniel about the fifth, sixth chapter, when God told the angel to go down and cut down the tree. He said, go ahead and cut Nebuchadnezzar down. We cut every spiritual Nebuchadnezzar, that thing that wants to bonk itself. Come on. We cut everything down that wants to come up against you. We cut everything down. We cut down the tree. God says that thing that vaunted itself, that thing that was so high and mighty and looking down, God said that thing is coming down in the name of Jesus. So we cut it down for our sister. We cut it down for our brothers. In the name of Jesus, we cut we cut everything. The Bible tells me that the prophet Elisha had to follow the prophet and he rolled away in the name of Jesus. He rolled away. Oh God, we roll it away. God, we remove it for our sister. You're praying for that person. You're concentrating on them. You're praying for them. You're concentrating on them. You're praying for them. You're concentrating on them. You're praying for them. We roll it away. That were too heavy for us. So God called a Jael anointing. God called one of your sisters in this virtual upper room to begin to war for you, to begin to contend for you. When you don't have the strength to pray anymore, that sister, what she's decreeing out of her mouth for you, will go ahead and fight the battle for you. Will go ahead and make war. Will go ahead and bring back victory. And bring back victory. We declare victory. God, every home, every home is settled. Every home, we speak a settling angel. We command. The Bible says, when the dust has been settled, what settled dust, everyone? Rain. 
what settle does. Rain. Rain, which is indicative of the Holy Spirit. Rain, which is indicative of the presence of God. Rain, which is indicative of the glory of God. Rain, what settle does. Rain. There's some things that were kicked up in our faces. There's some things that the enemy tried to hold before and wag it before you. And so now God says, rain is about to settle it. Rain in dominion. Rain, see, so they're in the upper room, the ninth day. Come on, Jesse. Jessica, you will never be the same daughter. God says there's a fire that's coming upon you. A fire to deliver young people. He says, if you stay in the place, if you stay in the covering, he says, if you are willing and obedient, he says, there's a fire that he's going to release upon you, my daughter, Jessica. In the name of Jesus, what settled dust, everyone, rain? Rain settles everything. R-A-I-N. So when we look at the prophet Elijah, who was on top of Mark, Mount Carmel, and then he says, look, he says, because I hear, I see a cloud. So the prophet then sends someone to look for him. And the person gives the wrong feedback. We're not going to get nothing wrong. No more wrong feedback. The person gave. This was Elijah's. Supposed to be Elijah's protege. Supposed to take the mantle from Elisha. And he asks him to go look. He says, what do you see? And the man said, I only see nothing. He says, go back again. What do you see? Oh, I only see something small. He says, go back. What do you see? I see something like the size of a man hand. His interpretation. He had micromanaged. I believe that he got too familiar with Elisha. He got so familiar. That's why the pastor had to go back and send him again. The pastor had to go back and send him again. And when he sent him the seventh time, then he got the understanding. He says, all I see is the size. All of us in there, I see a cloud. And he says, it's the size of my hand. So he put up his hand. And he tried to measure the glory that was coming. He tried to measure the rain by his hand. He tried to measure what his hand was able to do. And thought that that was going to be the glory. But he got it wrong. Because this thing that God is going to do for you. Man will not take glory. This thing that God is birthing in you. Man is not going to take the glory. This thing that God is birthing. Oh God the Bible tells me. That the prophet Paul. He went to the wizard. He went to the wilderness. He went to the wilderness. And he began to tarry and pray. And the Bible says that's how he met God. And God opened his eyes. And said go. Because there's one that's getting ready to open your eyes. And he's going to touch your eyes. In the name of Jesus. Let the rain of the glory come. Let the rain of the glory come. Right where you at. Say let the rain of the glory come. Let the rain of the glory come. Come on. Let the rain of the glory come. Let the rain of the glory come. Let the rain of the glory come. Yes, God. Let the rain of the glory come. Rain on my sister. Come on. Begin to decree and declare rain. Oh, God, on Nancy Nadell. Rain in the name of Jesus. On God, minister hey. Rain in the name of Jesus. Begin to rain on prophet Celia. Supple the ground. Saturate the ground. In the name of Jesus. I believe the ninth day, they begin to look at themselves. And they say, are you hungry? They're like, no, not for that no more. I'm ready for what God is about to do. They didn't know that the ninth day will be the last day. They were going to have to be in that position. The ninth day was going to be the last day that they're going to say, God, I wonder if you're going to do it. The ninth day was going to be the last day. They were saying, God, are you going to try? Are you really going to send the promise? Oh, God, I believe your word. Rain over my sisters. Rain over my brothers. Rain over every church. Rain let the outpouring of the Shekinah, let the outpouring of the Holy Ghost, let the outpouring of the Shekinah, let the outpouring of the Holy Ghost, rain, Jesus, rain. Rain in dominion. Wherever you go, you dominate. Wherever you go, because when you come out of this, Folk are going to say, wow, your language has changed. The way you see things change. It could be a little change, a microscopic change. You know, if you look at dust, little dust, 
that gets into our eyes. If you're like me, I wear contacts. A little dust irritates. A, a little dust makes everything uncomfortable. I wonder if there was too much dust where they were. God said, I'm removing that thing. That was a dust. He says, I'm removing everything that was a dust. Everything that came to settle on you. Everything that came to rest on you. That was not supposed to settle. That was not supposed to rest. The Bible tells me of one woman named Rispa. In the book of, I think, 1 Samuel chapter 21. For either 1 Samuel 21 or 22. Rispa. Rispa in, in Hebrew means hot coal. Rispa has gotten comfortable. And she has settled for stuff. You will never settle for that anymore. You will never settle for it anymore. She, she settled for stuff. And sometimes, especially we as women, we have a tendency for settling. We settle so many times for the little. Or we'll, we'll say, well, there's no way we can get out of this. Or as, even as men, sometimes men, they won't think that they're able to climb or, or mount to that thing. So there's some things that risk but settle. God, I believe, the Bible doesn't say it, but even as I ask Daddy to, uh, for my understanding, he said, I want them to stay there so they won't settle for just, just a drip. But they got to settle for a drench. Speak to me, Holy Ghost. They won't just settle just for bits of it, but they'll settle for the, but they got to get the whole of it. I'm about to close. They won't, I want them to be there so they won't just settle just for hand to mouth. I don't, I don't want him to just settle for just a woman, but she got to be the right woman that will help bring elevation to his life. I don't want her to just settle just because she thinks that she's had one divorce, two divorce, three divorce, four divorce, five divorce, six divorce, whatever it is, because God said that he has the best for you. He has the perfect for you. And there's perfection in Christ. He says there's some things that we settle for. He says in the midst of it looking small. He says you got to see it bigger than that. He says a lot of times we settle for the small. See because a man who didn't understand the prophet. When he says go back again. And he said I see the size of a man's hand. See what was getting ready to happen in the upper room. Was going to be so. It was going to be epic. What God is getting ready to do. Over your life. In your life is going to be epic. So when it's going to be epic. Everyone gets touched by it. Everyone is affected by it. Whether it's good, and because we know that God said, I know the thoughts and the plans that I think towards you, said the Lord. So you will not settle. You will not settle. You will not settle for it. You will not settle for it. But God, God says, you got to wake up. And there's a stirring up. There's an awakening. There's a stirring up. There's a awakening up. Everything that wants you to settle up. Everything that wants you to take it up. For what it is. By the fire of God. When fire is done, it burns out everything. It consumes everything up. You will never settle for it. You will never settle for that thing in your mind. You will not allow that thing to settle in your thoughts and then keep you there. No, 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 no. But God said, draw your sword. If you got to draw your sword 20 times, 2,000 times in a day, you got to contend because the anointing that's released on you because of this intercession, because of what he is doing, not because of what a woman is doing, because of what we are doing in this virtual upper room. God says everything up. That's going to be an outpouring. Every one of them spoke in one tongue. They spoke in multiple tongues. They spoke in different language. They spoke in the heavenly language. There was an outpouring. For those of you who know the heavenly language, God is speaking to it. Those of you who desire to be filled with the Holy Ghost, with the evidence of speaking in tongues. And it doesn't mean that because you don't speak in the, in the Holy Spirit, you don't speak in tongues, it's not, you're not saved. No. It's a gift. But if you did the sukuriataba, if you ban the ketebo, sukurabande, yes, soko, rus, did it in the bus soko, rakarobo, sunduru, sekun, did it in basata, there's a trenching up in the name of Jesus. Begin to just speak up. You'll feel a bubbling up. It may only a little be a bubbling up. It may be a little boiling up. And you begin to speak up as the Holy Ghost trains you. Because no pastor can train you to speak in tongues. It's oh God. It's not it's against protocol. No pastor can train up to speak in tongues. This is a training up by the Holy Ghost. 
and we are trained by the Holy Ghost. And when they heard the sound, their ear connected to the realm of the Spirit. And the Holy Spirit began to fill them. There's a rain in this place. There's a rain in this place. Saturate us, Lord. Rain in this place. Rain in every heart. There's a rain. We won't just settle for anything, God. But Daddy, we want all of you. We won't just settle for who we were. But God, we want to go to where you said no man has gone before. I know Neil Armstrong said it. Oh, but truth be told, you had already established it when you came to the earth and you created man. And you took the dust of the ground and you said, man, it's going to have dominion over everything. We walk in dominion. We operate in dominion. So uh, Neil Armstrong didn't say it. This is one small step for mankind. Oh, God, remember one giant leap. It's a giant leap in the realm of the spirit. It's where we ascend. It's where we position ourselves. It's where we strategize. It's where our angels, the angels, are engaged to move now. In the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you. Father, that we will not be the same. That we can never be the same. That I will not go back to that. God. This is where, because every promise that you promise me, begin to decree over your promise now. Begin to call in your promise. You may say, Apostle, I did it yesterday. Do it again. Call in. Call in your promise. And then God will begin to speak to you to call in some other things. There was a call that was released from a place of the threshing floor. When everything was beaten small, when everything was beaten out of them, where they desire no more than natural, where they are now in a place of the holy of holies, now it was time for the release of it. Father, release every promise. Release every word. Release, Daddy, every prayer. Release, Daddy, everything that your daughter and your son has prayed about. Release. I hear the Lord says he will not withhold it anymore. I don't know who that's for. Oh, Lord, I take it from me, please. I just, all I heard was withhold. He will not withhold it anymore. God, I receive it. I don't know what you're believing for. You don't know what I'm believing for. But we're sitting in the upper room and we believe together. He said he will not withhold if you just simply believe. You believe and then you move. You believe and then you activate it. You believe and you call it in. You believe. I believe that God will not withhold it anymore. There's some things that had to be held up in the thicket. And I close with this. I promise this time. As Abram in Genesis chapter 22 is going up. I believe the ramp was already there before he got up there. The Bible doesn't say that as he was going up, the ramp was going up. The Bible never tells us that. The Bible says that after the glory, when Abram was willing to sacrifice, was willing to sacrifice his Isaac, the Lord calls out and Abraham hears the Lord and the Lord says withhold your hand he says don't strike your child he says I provide a ram in the thicket God could have provided that ram three days because it took Abraham and the men that were with him three days to get to where they needed to go and so God has already positioned it I received this word as I release it to you, God is already positioned. The realm was already there. The test is how bad you want it. And so he says, can I, can I ask of you for that which will hurt? Can I ask of you for that which will cause you pain? 
can I ask of you for that which will say, God, are you sure? Because when we give it to God, when we truly release to God, then he's willing to open our eyes and show us exactly where he has positioned it. Abram didn't have to go searching for it. God, I receive this. He didn't have to go searching for it. He opened his eyes and he went exactly to where it was. And he untied it. Ooh. It was there waiting. What's waiting for you? I'm getting ready to go. Lord, I feel, I'm getting ready to go. Lord, 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 my God, my God. I just feel a bubbling in my spirit, man. My God, my God. He, he went there. He put his hands on it. And he untangled it. And he brought it to where he needed to have it. And he was then able to sacrifice that thing. There was an exchange. So what happened tonight was an exchange. As you were on here with me, and as you've been praying, and those who are perhaps maybe just coming on, or maybe you'll come on a little bit later, there's an exchange. God said, I'm getting ready to exchange. See what took place in the upper room? There was a supernatural exchange, Prophet Celia. There was an exchange for the rags, for his. There was an exchange that took place for that which was sin. There was an exchange for the outpouring of us. There was an exchange for that which was ugly in the upper room. To now God says, it's now beautiful. There was an exchange. I, I, I believe that there was an exchange in the upper room for that which was marred, marred and filthy. And now all of a sudden, it's now beautiful. There, there was an exchange for that which didn't make no sense. Now God says, I settle your mind. You don't got to now go to sleep and toss and turn and think about it and wonder and ponder anymore. There was an exchange, Prophet Celia. I believe, I believe Prophet Isaac. There was an exchange, Minister Jennifer. There was a divine exchange that took place in the upper room. Yes, yes, yes. There was an exchange for the filthy garments. There was an exchange for the fleshly appetites. For that which now could only be sentiated by the spirit man. There was an exchange for that which was poverty. There was an exchange because now they were going to be able to command wealth. Now they can go without purses. They can go without even having it all together. And the wealth was going to come because there was going to be such a release and a draw. in the I believe that there was a supernatural exchange. There was an exchange with their sound where their sound now becomes muffled. So now the sound of the Holy Ghost becomes magnus, become magnum, magnum we magnify it. the sound of the Holy Ghost was now magnified the more they heard their voice they prayed through to where their voice became now one they prayed through until their thoughts became now one they prayed through to where they now begin to look as one they prayed through to now they begin to smell as one they prayed through until now their sound became so now fine tuned in the realm of the spirit and now they had Access. I speak a divine access. That is, we've been praying that this is day nine. As your sons and daughters have been praying at their church, praying in their upper room, Daddy, we are now ready. We are ready, Daddy. We're ready, Daddy. We're ready, Daddy. I just saw seeds in the realm of the spirit. Seeds. S-E-E-D-S. Seeds. Now, Father, we plant the seed of this word, the seed of this prophetic release and declaration, the seeds that will germinate and multiply. Jaels, generals, brigadier generals, great men of God, apostles and prophets and pastors and evangelists and intercessors and those who are saved, the body of believers, those generals, intercessors, brigadier generals, master generals. Father, we thank you for the seed, for the potent seed, 
for the spermatic word, for the word that is spermatic, that it goes and fertilizes and it brings forth 30, 60, 100, 1,000, 30, 40, 60, 100, 1,000, 10,000 folds. And when Peter preached, 3,000 souls, the word was so spermatic. God, do it for us. That when Peter preached, the spermatic word got into 3,000. And 3,000 was converted at that moment. Father, we thank you. We thank you for helping us. Holy Spirit, we thank you for helping us to pray. We thank you for helping us to stay. We thank you for helping us to continue to be between the porch and the altar. Father, we thank you this night day. Everything that we've declared, what we striked in the beginning, to what's now seed and spermatic. Father, we thank you. How we glorify you. Father, let your prophetic release, your prophetic decree and declaration be upon every daughter and son. In the name of Jesus. Father, may the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you. And may you be lifted ever in the upper room. And may you continue to stay and dwell in the upper room. In Jesus' mighty name, we say amen. I love you. I love you so much. Thank you for spending time with your girl in the upper room. God bless you in Jesus' name. And the best oh, is still yet to come. God bless you all. God bless you.